Purge water ammo could help here. Aloy, you think we can talk? Hey, I was hoping you'd show up. I have something for you to commemorate our uh, mission. We did good together. Yeah, we did. I found out more about the Sons of Prometheus. They definitely have a base. It's a place called... First Force. You found one of... Hey, he was 
I caught up with, but there was still one of them was. Nice job. Ah, you know me. Send me those coordinates. Now hold up, a Sarah. I need to be. Of course. All right. I gotta get going. Well, I'm here if you need me. You've returned. Anything interesting happened while I was away? Aaron told us how you tracked down the Osaram supplying Regala with machines. In fact, he's quite adamant about relating the tale at least twice a day. But I can tell it meant a lot that you asked for his help. I wouldn't have been able to track them down if it wasn't for him. Better head out. Very well. You're back. I should head out. Right. I'll continue my research. I'm glad I could help Zoe fix the land gods. She never gave up on them. And because of her, and Song's fields will bloom again. What's this? This is the core from the weapon that took out that Zenith shield. Near that facility where we found Beta. I said it was advanced, like seeing its tech. How did Silence figure out how to build something like this? I'm back. Good. Did Aaron tell you we found the people who gave Regala's rebels the power to override machines? He told me of the battle. I suggested he etch this victory on his fighting arm with one of our inkers. Is he going to do it? He didn't say no. I have to go. Let me know when you need me. Every time we find another link to Durval, it's like opening up a wound for Aaron all over again. I really hope Asero was the last one. Maybe now he'll finally be able to heal from the pain of his sister's death. This must be from the Scorcher that Catalo and I took down. Not a bad way to test his arm. We've come a long way from the Embassy. Thank you. 
Looks like an artifact from Thebes. A tomb for Ted Pharaoh and the CEO. What a pair. This file refers to a fruit called pineapple. Huh. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have obtained Omega Clearance. was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. But with your subfunctions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega Clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Aloy. You better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. Aloy. I believe Varl is still waiting for you, outside Beta's room. I know. I just wanted to talk about something else first. As you wish. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, 
All archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Ted. Guess he got what he deserved, in the end. Yes. An igneous conclusion to his pathological narcissism, impulsive tendencies, and instability. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. How's Alva settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. I'm sure she'll like that. So our plan to capture Hephaestus, let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your Alpha clearance. Which is why I got Ted Farrow's Omega clearance. Correct. While you were gone, Beta constructed the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega clearance will allow you to trap it. And then you'll be able to absorb it? Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus's malicious code before the merge. How long will that take? Because the work will be split between you and Beta, it will take approximately 4.5 hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenith. Sounds like a plan. So I, uh, found Thebes. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega Clearance on the terraforming system, I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. I should be going. Goodbye, Aloy.
Aloy. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back? Alone. In a cell again. A slave. Forever. Laurel and I will be at Gemini too. I'll protect you. As soon as we get Hephaestus, we'll come straight back here. The Zeniths aren't going to find us. You don't have to be afraid. No! You can't protect me! Nothing can protect me from them! I told you from the beginning, we'll never beat them! It's hopeless! You don't understand! You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I've thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I looked through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned, and isolated just like me, so what's the difference? What's my defect? He raised you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? It was like having a strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper. And then fight like you can win. You don't have to go on the mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. You said you'd try to protect me. I believe you. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I promise. I 
I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merch, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. I swear. Hey, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. I am. Is there something you wanted to talk about? You said you spent years studying in a training interface. Was this archive you mentioned part of that? But only the parts I was permitted to access. Aristotle and Aspasia. The avatars of the Archive would assign me learning modules and evaluate my progress. Wait, those names? They were designed to be the virtual guides for the Apollo database before Ted Farrow purged it. The Zenith have a copy. So it still exists. And you got to learn from it. Only what was deemed pertinent to the mission. If I requested information outside of my parameters, my tutors would deny it. To have all that knowledge, just out of reach, must have been frustrating. A little. You said the Zenith's colony in the Sirius system was destroyed. What happened? All I was ever told was that a natural disaster forced them to leave Sirius. I've speculated that it was an extrasolar object or cataclysmic seismic event or maybe even an abnormally violent coronal mass ejection from Sirius A did the Zenus tell you any details something that might narrow it down they said the only thing that mattered was that they survived first earth a thousand years ago and then Sirius guess they survived old age too so you know about the extinction signal speculation, but the only logical conclusion why Gaia suddenly self-destructed after operating efficiently for centuries. Gaia would have only undertaken such a desperate course of action if it had detected a threat to life on Earth that was more dangerous than ceasing function altogether. I should have realized that she would also order the recreation of Elizabeth Sobek to rebuild her. Her plan almost failed. If I hadn't stumbled upon a focus as a kid, things would have been a lot different. So how goes studying up on the merge? Guy and I have added a function that will display a holographic interface to visualize the data stream from Hephaestus. It should make expunging its malicious code a little more efficient. That's great. Whatever we can do to cut down the merge time is going to increase our chance of success. Good work. I'll continue to search for other ways to speed up the process. But whenever you're ready, I am too. All of us joined us. Have you two had a chance to talk? She told me she's not allowed to access a lot of the data her people have. Similar to the restrictions I had in my training interface. I told her that if we succeed at Gemini, then once we return, I'll help her search for more ways to help her family. Even though Gaia will fix the biosphere, it'll take time for farmlands to fully recover. So, I want to help speed things up. How so? Bioengineering of more resilient plant strains, 
Novel crop production methods, equipment upgrades, something that might help in the short term. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. So when you talk to the others, are you calling them over the focus? No, they'll come down here to visit. Like Erend. He's funny. But loud. I wish I could show him the media portal and the data channel. I think he would like the sports hollows. There was one where two people would criticize each other before wrestling to see who was stronger. It was bizarre and violent, but I think Erend would enjoy it. Yeah, you're right. I bet he would. So when you talk to the others, are you calling them over the focus? No, they'll come down here to visit. I wish I could... I think he would like... There was one criticizing... It was... Yeah, you're right. I gotta go. All right. Be safe. Hey, I thought I'd check in before leaving for Gemini. Are you sure we shouldn't be checking up on you? Whatever went on between you and Beta sounded intense. Not that I'm judging. <laughs> Forge knows all the screws flew loose every time Mercer and I fought. I think we'll be fine from now on. I'm glad to hear it. After we get Hephaestus, we'll be taking the fight to the Zeniths. So... No more reading. Yeah, I wasn't that bad. Not really. Besides, uh, going through all that data helped me realize something. You know, the soldiers, the, the ones that fought the Pharaoh machines so Gaia could be built? Uh, they were fighting a battle that couldn't be won. Not with all the weapons in the world. I think most of them realized that, whether anyone said it or not. They still did it, though. They bought time for all the eggheads working to save the future. Our future. As long as I can do that for you, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you, Erend. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, enough. I'm gonna get emotional. Anybody take you up on that ale you brought yet? Zoe can't stand the smell of it. I tried Alva, but I don't think she knows what taking a break means. And I'm not putting Varl anywhere near that stuff after that victory party in Meridian. What about Catalo? Ah, now there's a man that can hold his liquor. 
Pretty sure we downed half a keg. We had a good chat, I think. I should go. That same here. I got a date with a cauldron to prepare for. Aloy, everything okay with you and Beta? It sounded like you guys had a uh, lively conversation. We just had a lot to talk about. Does this mean she's coming with us to Gemini? It does. I hope you're ready to rein in the most stubborn AI of all time. That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hephaestus won't go down quietly. Hephaestus is just a program that's lost its way. We are fighting for our survival. I can always call upon the goddess if you're nervous. Funny. Any last findings you want to share before leaving? Not really. Though I've reached a decision. Oh? When we put Gaia together, I want to return to the Nora, spread what I've learned. You think they'll listen to you? In time, I believe so. If anyone can make it happen, it's you, Val. What will you and Zoe do if you go back to the Embrace? I hope she'll come with me. At least for a while. And I'll go with her to Plainsong, too. She'll probably want to talk to her people about all this, as well. We'll figure it out. I know you will. I hope firing off those pulse generators will be enough to distract the Zeniths. It'll work. It has to. Always optimistic, huh? Nah, just stubborn. It's a good quality to have when dealing with you. Yeah, right. How does everyone seem to you? Anxious, but ready. I heard Catalo ask for Alva's help with his pulse generator. And I know he's been helping her with a few fighting techniques, just in case. I hope they aren't needed. Like I said, just in case. You were right, you know. About keeping Rost's memories buried. I guess part of me thought he was holding me back. Because he wanted me to be a Nora. But the truth is, he gave me a lot. And I took him for granted. He was a good man. He raised you well. I hope firing off those pulse jets. It'll work. Always up to. Nah, just. Yeah. I'm glad you're coming with me, Varl. Sure, there's no urge to run off alone in there somewhere? No more running. Hey, we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. You good with the plan? I've already got the location of my assigned cauldron. Good. I heard you and Beta had a... talk. News travels fast. It wasn't exactly a quiet conversation. There were just things that needed to be said. A healthy crop to those who clear the weeds between them, as the Utaru say. You look like you have something on your mind. We're going to war soon. And war is something I promised myself I'd left behind in the Red Raids. But the more of your data I go through, every voice I hear, every word I read from her ancient past, it makes me realize just how much life was given so that ours could flourish. Fighting for that gift, it's our responsibility. If we fail, it was all for naught. Helps to know you're not alone. For a moment there, you sounded like Varl. I don't know what you're talking about. I should go. As soon as you intend to leave for Gemini, you'll hear about it. Aloy, are you well? 
Had a bit of an issue with Beta. It's better now, though. Ah. Uh, I'm not surprised. Really? Why not? I once knew a warrior who discovered he had a brother late in life. It was deeply uncomfortable for him. Did he ever get over it? In time. But not before the two siblings nearly killed each other in a single combat challenge. Ah. Well, at least I avoided that. Are you nervous about the mission ahead? If I live, it will be in victory. If I die, it will be in battle. What matters most is that you achieve your objective. I'll do my best. Think you're ready to put all your training to the test? I am Tanakh. I am always ready. I should go get ready. I await your orders. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just studying the pulse generator schematics. The ones Gaia and Beta built. <laughs> the craftsmanship is remarkable. Is everything all right? It sounded like there was an uh, issue with Beta and the mission. Not anymore. We just needed to talk some things through. To understand one another is to embrace truth. Oh, and uh, if you have a moment, there's something I could use your help with. Have you spoken with Zoe at all? A little bit, but uh, I did hear her singing with Varl not too long ago. I don't think they noticed. So seemed so uh, free when she did it. Like every emotion she had was taking flight in song. Uh, and she looked happier because of it. Uh, I felt so dull and nervous in comparison. You should ask so to teach you sometime. About Utaru music. Maybe. If you need anything before heading out to the cauldrons... You have nothing to worry about. Gaia's explained your plan in detail. As expected from such an efficient AI. I've even received some very, um, uh, succinct combat advice from Kotalo. You know, uh, in case the Zeniths show up. What kind of advice? He, um, told me to run. For now. We'll even the odds soon enough. Any more data catch your eye? All of it. I have so much to study up on. Years, actually. I'm particularly interested in the Odyssey. We knew the ancestors had made it to the moon. In fact, we theorized some of them had settled on it. But Sirius is way farther than that. And we thought journeying across the ocean would be the feat of a lifetime. The sheer calculations needed for space travel. It's overwhelming to think about. Even so, the Quen are way ahead of other tribes when it comes to understanding this stuff. Where I grew up, everyone thought that stars were sparks that rose from a fire lit by the goddess to guide us through the night. Must be strange to think that some of the ancestors your tribe reveres are still alive. And here on Earth, right now. Yeah, it is. Part of me is curious to know who else besides Eric Visser might be among them. Maybe Nikita Arand? We call her the Spark. The legacy tells us she brought unlimited energy to the Old Ones. Or Song Zhao, whom we call the Healer. It is said she found new ways to extend the ancestors' lifespans. But my curiosity fades when I think of how different our view of Visser was compared to the reality that you experienced. Perhaps it is better not to know. You mentioned there was something you needed help with? Yes. Uh, so, as I was sifting through data from the greenhouse, I found references to an old world system back in the Great Delta. It's called Leviathan. My people discovered it decades ago. A sprawling network of river gates and a labyrinth of underground tunnels. 
The legacy revealed that the old ones used it to control flooding. But we've never gotten it to work. The whole thing is shut down. But the data from the greenhouse mentions the research facility where Leviathan was created. It's in San Francisco. Another Pharaoh facility? No. Leviathan was a project by Eileen Sasaki, another ancestor. So the legacy tells us, anyway. If we can acquire that data, we might be able to fix the system back in the Great Delta. Every year, my sister gets terrified when the long rains begin. With Leviathan, maybe she won't have to be. Okay. So where in San Francisco is this facility? That's the thing. The data doesn't say where, exactly. But one of our diviners has been exploring the ruins. He might know. Would you come with me? I have a feeling that wherever this facility is, well, you're much better at fighting machines than I am. Of course. I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. Thank you, Aloy. I should go. Make sure you talk to Gaia if you have any questions about the pulse generators. May your path lead to truth. And, like I said, I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. We'll find the data you're after. I appreciate it. Let the pretty landscapes fool you. Alva said one of the diviners here might know where the Leviathan research facility is. Better go to the campfire and let her know I'm here. Hey, Alva. I'm in landfall. Can you meet me here? I'll be there as soon as I can. Aloy! I'm here. Had to sneak past a few machines on the way, but... I made it. All right. Ready to talk to that diviner? Yes. He's right over there. Diviner Alva, what are you doing back in Landfall? And with the living ancestor? We're looking for the At Bay Research Center, where Leviathan was developed. The legacy tells us it's somewhere in the city. Alva mentioned you've been collecting data in the area. Do you know where it is? Uh, yes, I stumbled across it, but there was no data there, only crumbling ruins. Tell us anyway. We might be able to find something you missed. Please, don't trouble yourself. I, I, I sh assure you, our search was very thorough. Mm, you're hiding something. What? That... that is absurd. A diviner must only speak truth, as you're well aware. Oh, you're worried you found something dangerous. Something compromising on Eileen Sasaki? Keep your voice down. Look, I get it, Nirik. You want to make it back to your family, so it's safer to turn a blind eye. 
But think of Leviathan, how it could help everyone. Isn't that why we're here? Don't let fear deny us that. Very well. The facility's just south of here, along the shore. But even if you find a way to fix Leviathan, it's sure to be shrouded in that which is forbidden. Too often, the truth is forbidden. Come on, let's go. Not bad with that diviner back there. You've come a long way since we first met. And Nerex like I used to be. Terrified of a misstep. And with the overseers, he has every right to be. But what I've seen and learned since the greenhouse, uh, it's so much more than what we're permitted. Diviners are supposed to seek the truth, and yet so much is kept from us. I'm tired of it. That should be the facility ahead. Oh, we need to find a way in. Why is the ground shaking? That's not good, whatever it is. Whoa, that, that thing is huge! We'll have to take it out if we want to find that thing. Oh my god. Okay. something a little bit I think I'll be able to follow you there.
coming at the slow. We should be able to look around for that data now. Getting in this way. Might have collapsed when that slither thing came in. I don't think it'll connect. I'll be able to follow you there. I might be able to kick that vent open. After you. Time for a swim. Mm, at least the water's not freezing. Look at this place. I always try to imagine what it must have been like, back when the old ones were. It was less of a climb, I bet. Come on, let's check the upper floors. You okay? On every expedition, the soldiers would lay down walkways and barriers first to protect us diviners. But this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> there, the console. Must have been what Nerik found. The data on Leviathan isn't here, but there's some kind of log. Delete the database? But Miss Sasaki, when you look at the reports, 3,000 exhibiting symptoms. 
Over 400 dead. The data is clear. Omarama is contaminating the water supply, promoting bacterial growth. And with Leviathan based on the same architecture... You're a smart kid. Top of your class, right? My father built this company thanks to world-class talent like you. And you know what else is world-class? Our legal team. So unless you want to spend the rest of your career in some dead-end, underfunded public research institute, you'll delete that database and forward all data on Leviathan to my office. Yes, ma'am. That was her. The ancestor. Eileen Sasaki. Hundreds dead. And she knew their system was to blame, but she had the truth erased. Were all the ancestors like this? Selfish, ruthless, immoral? And yet we hold them up as paragons of enlightenment and virtue. Given what we've learned, I don't even know if Leviathan will work. Hold on. Let's not give up just yet. You said before that the Old Ones use Leviathan to control flooding. Which means... it probably worked. We'll know more when we find the data on it. The recording mentioned a copy was sent to Eileen's office. To their corporate headquarters. Uh, there. Let's go. It shouldn't take us long to get to the tower. Lead on. So what was that other system the recording mentioned? Omu Ramba? The legacy tells us it was the predecessor to Leviathan, a system that manipulated floods to bring life to a barren desert. Quan seemed to know a lot about this ancestor. Diviner spent years trying to figure out how to restore Leviathan. We found a lot of data on Eileen Sasaki in the process. Though, now I wonder how much of it is actually true. Entrance is blocked. Gonna have to find another way in. The soldiers built a path on the nearby ruin. Might be able to cross over from there. Lead the way. I think this is as far as our soldiers got. We'll have to climb higher to get into the tower. I'll follow your lead. You doing okay, Olva? Yes. Don't worry about me. Quick, <laughs> Glenn, talk. Great. Did it see us? I don't think so, but we'll have to be careful. going to get across. 
Oh, that beam looks promising. A lot higher up than I thought. Glint talks. Well, we have the element of surprise. Or we could sneak by and, you know, not fall off the tower. Soldiers say the Glintocks are the worst. Up this way. Okay, just don't look down. I'll wait here. Right! <laughs> of course! Super easy! <laughs> There's the tower. Should be able to cross over. But we are going to have to jump. Uh, after you- Aloy! I'm okay! Gotta clear some of that debris first. <laughs> You can do it. It's okay. Please don't break. Alba! Ah! Oh, I'm okay! <laughs> wow! <laughs> that would have been a long way to fall. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. Let's keep going. Oh. This says the code is the month and year the company was founded. The door's locked. It was October I think it needs a passcode. Let's look around. So the code. 
company was founded in October. Which is the tenth month of the year. Got it. Door should be unlocked now. Maybe the data on Leviathan isn't here. Cost reduction strategy? We're talking about people's lives here. I did as you asked on Omuramba, but this is... worse. Relax, Eileen. I've spoken with risk management. They're confident that the chance of another incident is within acceptable parameters. We're moving ahead with Leviathan. You know, Dad, shortcuts have a way of catching up with you, within acceptable parameters or not. Well, one day in the distant future when you're in charge, you can run things how you want. But until then, how about you let me worry about that? Guess Eileen and her father didn't always get along. But it seems like covering up Omuramba wasn't her idea. Doesn't matter. She still had a part in it. Well, let's keep going. Her office must be higher up. Uh, dead end. There's a ladder in that shaft, but it's blocked. I might be able to pull the rubble out from the other shaft. for a way up that has a lesser chance of falling to my death. Okay. Hey, Alva? Yes? There's something I don't get. You said Eileen was the one who built Leviathan, not her father, so... What happened? I'm not sure. The legacy doesn't say. Either that knowledge is lost, or forbidden. Or maybe we were wrong about that, too. It's a long way up.
get up higher. How about you, Alva? Any luck finding a way up? Not yet. That's done with. Okay, I'm back at the shafts. If I blow up that fire gleam, the elevator might fall and open up a path for Alva. Hey, uh, Alva? Step away from the shaft. Okay, but, um... Why? You'll see in a second. Whoa! Oh! I can reach the ladder now! Uh, be right up, Aloy! Looks like there's another floor above. Might be Eileen's office. Okay, I'll meet you up there. Come on, let's see what's up here. Another locked door. Need to figure out the passcode. These artifacts. I, I think these were Eileen's. It's every diviner's dream to discover even one of the ancestor's artifacts. And maybe they'll help with the door. It's art, I think. Could it be? Yes, I think this was commissioned in honor of the company's 25th anniversary. That must be the Dragonfly 6. Ape used it in most of their construction projects. The Dragonfly 6 was their most successful model. Huh. What did you say this was for again? The company's 25th anniversary. Looks like it used to be on the last pedestal. This looks like some kind of prototype. For water purification. Must be the H2 flow. The uh, what? H2 flow. Their early inventions had strange names. Oh, that must be the Larson Macquarie Award. Mm, the legacy focus. says Eileen won it when she was 40 for her work on Leviathan. Interesting. How old was Eileen when she won this award? 40. All the numbers you mentioned. I wonder if they make up the passcode. Yeah, it's worth a try. You said Eileen was how old when she won this? 40. What was this thing again? The H2 flow. You said this was commissioned for something? The company's 25th anniversary. Looks like it used to be on the last pedestal. That didn't do anything. I thought that would have worked. Did we overlook something? I wonder if my focus can show me anything. The 
two artifacts on the ground. Maybe they used to be on opposite pedestals. Not quite right. Did it. You can almost see the whole city from up here. Corner office. Impressive view. It must have been Eileen's. Let's see if the data on the wire thing is here. Escort Dad to his vert. Guess we'll be speaking through lawyers from now on. Looking down at the world from here. It's hard to see the details. People become risk factors. Statistics. <laughs> Far too easily. Omuramba was supposed to provide clean water. Improve lives. It was easier to pretend there wasn't a problem. Easier to believe. The lie was truth, but I don't want to pretend anymore. I will build Leviathan right. No more shortcuts. No more lying just to save face. It won't undo our sins. My sins. But maybe we can still do some good. She overthrew her father, uh, took over the company, so that Leviathan wouldn't end up killing people. It sounded like she regretted covering up Omuramba's failure. She wasn't perfect. Not a paragon, as the Quan believe, but not a monster, either. She tried to make up for her mistakes. And now you know the truth. Uh, as for the data... Leviathan... Yes, uh, it's here. Downloading a copy now. Is something wrong? I think I'll stay here a while longer. There's a lot more data that I want to look through. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Down is always easier than up. Let's speak again when we're back at base. Okay. I'll see you there. Well, oh. after climbing all the way up, why not glide down? Wait, you're going to what? Just thinking about it. Don't worry about me. I can find my way down.
<laughs> hey, Lolly! Did you make it? Sure did. Uh, amazing. Well, see you back at base. Good luck out there. I'm at your service, Ancestor. I am at your disposal, Ancestor. I've never seen anyone take on a Thunderjaw like that. Aloy, do you have a moment? Aloy, I'm glad you're here. I wanted to give you this for helping me get the data on Leviathan. I didn't really know what to give you, so I asked Zoe what you might like. Thanks, Alpha. I'll put it to good use. Have you looked through the data we recovered on Leviathan? There is much to sort through still, but... I believe we'll be able to get it operational and turn back the floods. And I've given more thought to everything we've uncovered about the Ancestors. The Overseers would have us believe they were infallible paragons. But Pharaoh wasn't. Not even close. His greed led to machines that devoured the world. The archive of the Old One's knowledge destroyed, just to erase his mistakes. So, when we learned that Eileen had a hand in covering up hundreds of deaths, I started to think they were all the same. Selfish, egotistical, cruel. But in the end, it's not that simple. The truth isn't a straight line of ink on a crisp scroll. It's a splatter, smudged and faded on stained parchment. I wish more Quen could see that, instead of looking the other way or twisting the truth to serve their own schemes. I doubt Bohai would agree with you. No, nor the rest of the Board of Overseers. As Eileen said, it's easier to believe the lie is truth, but it's worth fighting for. And this Diviner, at least, won't settle for anything less. For that, I thank you, Aloy. I need to go get ready. 
right. So should I. Welcome back. Hello, Aloy. So, I guess you heard all that below with Beta? Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships, despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel. I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings, names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend? Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate. Though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. Did all that she could. Thanks, Gaia. So what will happen to this place while we're at Gemini? All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. So, about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us until now. She's been through so much. Completely alone. You have both endured many hardships. Different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobek. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this, among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea, as long as you're the one running the lessons. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together.
connections in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Aaron, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay, radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. Connecting to the Cauldron Network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence.
them for now. You two okay? Sorry, there was something I needed to do. You were talking before I left? Sorry, had to go deal with something. You were talking about something before I left. Still breathing. Aloy, Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Keep her it out of wherever it's hiding. Make it retreat to the core. Thanks for the heads up. I'm almost there. It's some kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right? What, what kind of machine is it trying to build? I don't know, but I'm gonna shut it down. But those metal carriers will lead me to where it's getting materials from. I bet that's where Hephaestus is hiding, too. Let me think. What if you bypass the processor? Connect it to the power node. I think that could work. I think it could.
Get comfortable. Energy containment failed. Sense over me. Great. Festus covered the floor with lightning. Find a way to it. Aloy, more machines keep coming. Please tell me you're getting close. I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side too. I guess Aaron's missing out. Anyway, I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cycling module together. Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. O or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a explosion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Aloy.
Four, 
running out of places to hide. Uh, Aloy? I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. The machine that Festus was building. It must have finished it. Oh, it's, it's powerful. Whatever it is. I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should... Should we come to you? Maybe I can distract the machine if... No, wait. Just stay where you are, okay? And the machine's in the trouble. Be safe. Sending Hephaestus back to you. Hephaestus! Got it! Hephaestus is back in the core! Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. And then we can start the merge. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Laurel. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. is done.
Core is stable. Festus is 100% contained. And we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Done. We need to excise Hephaestus' malicious code. Carefully. Cost us quite a lot of time. <laughs> Eric, get beta. And squash that bug while you're there. Get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Tilda! I failed. Hush. All is not lost. Tilda! What the hell are you doing? Stop her! Where am I? Ah, you're awake. You took quite a hit when Gerard attacked you. I imagine you must still be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. 
And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. Tell to bring me here. What is this? Just a few favorites from my collection. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Take a look, if you like. I'm curious to hear your impressions. My friend is dead. Beta and Gaia are gone. And you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh no. I made my real fortune later. Why do you keep the forgery? I've always enjoyed studying the two side by side. Both painters capture light, color, and perspective. But what makes one a masterpiece and the other simply an imitation? The forgery looks... sharper? Good eye. The details are crisp. The contrast bold. It tells us more. And yet, we feel less. What's in the letter? Who can say? What does the painting tell you? She's... concerned? Whatever's written in the letter troubles her? A burden she can't put down. Why go through so much effort to make a fake masterpiece? The forger initially painted under his own name, but found little success. His work was considered unremarkable. But when he took on the guise of Vermeer, suddenly it was celebrated as extraordinary. But it was a lie. And he knew it. Sometimes we struggle to glean what is real and imagined, even within ourselves. The irony of these two is that Vermeer died in obscurity. He had no idea his work would become some of the most precious, most copied, most preserved pieces in all history. goddess of the moon, whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? 
more like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. And why can't Selene and Endymion be together? Selene took a vow of chastity, promising to never take a lover. So when she fell in love with Endymion, she could only visit him at night while he slept. But then wouldn't she be breaking that vow? Think of it as a forbidden love. Though circumstance keeps them apart, still they find a way to come together, however briefly. Aren't Selene and Endymion cold? Perhaps we should move on to another piece. Shall we move on? This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. About Jeremiah. If he knew his home would be destroyed, why didn't he save the people? Why save those relics? He tried. But no one would listen to his warning, so he saved what he could. But how did he know? He was a prophet. He saw an army invade and destroy the city in a vision. So it's more like he calculated which side would win a battle. What matters is that he was right in the end. If not for him, all those wonders would have been lost forever. At least this way, some part of his world survived. You know what I like the most about this piece? Even though he's the sole survivor, his home in ruins left with only the remnants of his world. The light keeps the shadows at bay. There's still hope. Precisely. Take as long as you like. of the painter, Rembrandt's son, Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of... a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune and the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Works of art such as these can often cause us to look inwards at our own lives. I'm sorry about your friend. Had I been able to intervene, I would have. But the risk of losing you as well was too great. Everything went by in a blur. I couldn't get to him. You know, long before holograms and focus recordings, people relied on art to memorialize their loved ones. Because of works like this painting, their lives are immortalized. Rembrandt had four children by his wife. All but Titus died shortly after she gave birth to them. She passed not long after that. Titus became the only family Rembrandt had. Which is why he painted him this way. Indeed. Then tragedy struck again. Disease claimed Titus at 26. It's almost as if Rembrandt painted the future, closing in on him. Rembrandt actually painted several portraits of Titus, but this one has always been my favorite. It's 
honest. What do you mean? In others, Titus was portrayed in brighter, livelier states, but here, Rembrandt allows himself to express his true feelings. Sorrow, fear, hope, love, laid bare on campus for all time. I see this one resonates deeply with you. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day. But not as influential as you've been in this new world. The militia. They look disorganized. Where others painted such scenes in a stiff and stationary manner, Rembrandt chose to show them in action, preparing to march. He wanted them to feel alive. You can almost hear the commotion. Who's the girl in the painting? She's a strange one, isn't she? Bathed in light, though no one is paying attention to her. Many believe she's a symbol of the militia. A physical manifestation of their spirit, if you will. But she's not real? What's real in a painting? She's meant to represent the militia's virtue and victory. But I like to think they underestimate her. She looks as if she's seen something. What does she know? What secrets does she keep? There's so much detail to take in, isn't there? The Gust by Willem van de Velde the most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Where is the ship going? To a faraway land, most likely. My ancestors used ships like these to explore the world, sometimes at great cost. What were they looking for? Anything of value. They were traders willing to face unknown dangers to make their fortunes. But no matter how far they went, they always turned their sails home. So this Von de Velde only painted ships? It was his specialty. Following in the footsteps of his father, Willem the Elder. The two had quite a journey of their own, taking them all the way to the court of a foreign kingdom. Did they ever come home? No, but eventually their lives worked it. Take your time. Stunning, isn't it? 
paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's leaded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. If this you are was a memorial, how did you end up with it? As the Pharaoh's swarm closed in, my homeland's greatest museum gave it to me, along with many other works, in the hope that I could preserve them. A masterpiece like this was too important to lose to history. I even considered bringing it with me off-world to ensure its safety. Why didn't you? I took a calculated risk. This vault seemed more secure than the unknowns of space. Besides, I thought someday I might return. A long life after all has its advantages. Now, lo and behold, here I am. Exquisite, isn't it? A lot of weight on his shoulders. I know the feeling. I should move on. She's pulling out her own hair. Out of madness, out of grief. It's hard to watch her suffer. I should move on. There you are. Feeling better? How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it, it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta, in the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done? You think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them and live with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. My old focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life A 
thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to. In order to understand, to be enlightened. You truly are Elizabeth's blood. With her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. There. That's better. Now, we must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship, a complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted, heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them, create the world she imagined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Yeah, Regala and her rebels. Even now, she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. She's been duped. They'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man, he's planned for everything, except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I want to help you. I mean it. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape, bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? If you like.
So you know all about me. What about you? What would you like to know? Well, start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian <laughs> sent me to boarding school. <sighs> Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh, so we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You're an outcast, but you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries, profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were, certainly. It, it wasn't until we were off-planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying a pampered dream state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again, but this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now finally, having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you, of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Far Zenith's original vision a better future for humanity. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the Data Channel. A virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta... None of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. 
The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes. Though it pained me. I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. She felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. To think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me. Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here, in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the Alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery, once the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the sons of Prometheus. The ones working with Regala. By tapping their focuses, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack 
Gerard's face. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Regala's only interested in killing Hakaro and waging war on the Karja. What does she have to gain by attacking Zeniths? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you, and more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation, but in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step an AI driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence. To care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated. And I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her, then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't, but she was very welcoming, almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only halfway through the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling.
first for all. Now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. Wait. The data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible. We might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? Watching me. I, I, I can't hold up this extra projection for long. You should have killed me. No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay. I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. again when it's time. Can you hold on? As long as I know you're coming for me, I can endure anything. All right. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? With Aragala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? That is between me and my sister. Will be Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. The ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if, when.
Aaron, are you there? Aloy! Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... Uh, we're, we're back at base. What happened? It... It might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. Uh, we'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. Just to let you know, I'm now patched into your focus network. Great. I take it the other Zenas can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. Must be spitting out hunter killers, too. This will break my fall.
Easy. When you're wounded, you have to strike back. Draw blood. Hey! Can I get one damn minute to mourn my friend? Regala is going to slaughter my tribe to overthrow Hikaru. The Zeniths have Beta and Gaia. We can't sit around wallowing in our losses. Katalo's right. We must fight. Oh, all right. So what are we gonna do, huh? Take on all of Regala's rebels? Not to mention the Zeniths. What can we even do? Throw ourselves at their base? Something like that. So... After we lost contact with you, we regrouped and went to Gemini. What happened? The recording we found on Varl's focus cut off when that Zenith Eric... The Zeniths were tracking Hephaestus. When Gaia trapped it in Gemini, they... They knew where we were. After... Varl tried to stop them. They took Beta and Gaia. I only survived because one of the Zeniths turned against the others to save me. One of them? Well... At least we didn't lose you too. So what do we do now? We're going to defeat the Zeniths. And get Beta and Gaia back. But first... We're going to stop Regala. How? Back in Gemini, Beta gave me... A gift. There's something I need to do first to make it work, but it could put an end to the bloodshed. Word is, Regala's readying her army for an all-out assault on the Grove. I... Need to be there. I know. Go. Stand with Akaro. And keep an eye on the sky. Strike true as the ten. The rest of you, whatever preparations you need to make, upgrades, resupplies, get on it. It won't be long before we take the fight to the Zenith. We'll be ready, Aloy. And when you're ready, meet me outside the east exit. I'd like to have a word in private. Even when things are darkest, you're the flame that lights the way forward. Just tell me one thing. Am I gonna get to smash up a bunch of Zenith bastards? We all are. Good. Before I do anything else, I should check on Zoe. It sounded important. It's all going to be okay. We can't give up now. You look busy. My studies are a good distraction. Especially after Cauldron Gemini. Varl, Beta, Gaia. Gone. And that's just the beginning. The Zeniths want to rob us of our future, too. We won't let that happen. How are you holding up? Varl's loss is heavy on everyone's mind. I didn't know him well, but I can see how much he meant to the others. Zoe and Arend seem to have taken to it the hardest, but I don't quite know what to say to them. They need time to sort through it. And what about you? Will time heal your wounds? I don't know. I try not to think about it. Seems like everyone's ready to take the fight to the enemy. Katalo more than most. 
If I were this Regala, I wouldn't want to cross him on the battlefield. Regala still has a lot of machines on her side. That's where you come in, I suspect. If my plan works. So, all of the tribes here are new to you? Yes. I've been studying up on them. The most fascinating one thus far has been the Tanakht. An entire culture based on the holograms of an ancient museum. There's much they've misinterpreted. Not unlike the Quen. But still, there's a nobility to what they've become. They're honorable and fearless. And deadly. Tilda, the Zenith that Beta mentioned, she was the one who rescued me. Did she say why? She knew Elizabeth Sobek. Seems to think helping me is honoring her in some way. She was willing to share information on both Silence's plans and the other Zeniths. But you still don't trust her. Where I come from, the more valuable the knowledge shared, the higher the price extracted. I'd be careful if I were you, Aloy. I should get going. Be ready to go on my signal, okay? I won't let you down. I know. I thought you were gonna go fight some Tanakhs. I wanted to check in with you first. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just, you know, picking up the pieces like everyone else. They'll be there when you need me. I never doubted that. Oh, good. I'm glad you're back. So am I. Do you think so will be okay? I don't think anyone's ever okay after losing the one they love. I can't tell you she's handling it better than I ever did. That keeps the rest of us level-headed. I know you hate waiting, but you'll have to stay back here a little longer. Well, you go do what you gotta do, but uh, are you okay? It's not just Varl we lost. Beta's gone. I, mean, I almost lost it when I realized my sister had been taken by Durval back in the Sundom. I'm getting her back. That's all that matters. Understood. I need to get going. Uh, you better get there before Catalo tries to take on Regala's entire army by himself. Okay, do me a favor. Don't go disappearing on us again. I'll do my best. think you'd be back so soon. Tilda's the one who rescued me. Same one that spoke to Beta when none of the others would. Did she say why she saved you? She knew Elizabeth Sobek. Seems to think helping me is honoring her in some way. She was willing to share information on both Silence's plans and the other Zeniths. But you still don't trust her. Where I come from, the more valuable the knowledge shared, the higher the price extracted. I'd be careful if I were you, Aloy. I gotta go. Don't stay cooped up in here for too long. I'll try.
this time I've been so focused on what Elizabeth was like, what she would do. I was wrong to hold Beta to that standard. I probably shouldn't even be doing it to myself. I'll try to do better. When it looks impossible, look deeper. And then fight like you can win. I will, Rost. Now, and always. Focus. It's Forles. I used to think no Nora would ever accept one. But Farl did. Even when he was overwhelmed. He refused to let me push him away. I failed for all, at Gemini. I should have pushed harder, I should have done more. I'd give anything to have him back. So Silent's plan was to trick Regala into sacrificing her tribe in a hopeless battle against the Zenus. It's so... heartless. Hikaru, Dekka, Catalo, countless others. I won't let their lives be thrown away. Feels empty in here without Gaia. Unlocked now. The guy had gone. Made his things. Hey, boy. If you were listening to this, then, um, 
Things didn't go as planned at Gemini. I know you'll keep your promise. Which means I must be dead. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But a lot's happened since you found me in that ectogenic chamber. Thank you, Aloy. You've been... my shelter. And I would risk it all again... to be by your side. I know you'll find a way forward. That's what you do. I'm sorry, Beta. But I'm getting you back, no matter what it takes. I don't work. this place. Got to be honest, I don't really know what to say to the future. So I guess I'll say something to the past instead. Mom, 
Dad, I know you'll never hear this, but I wanted to say thank you. For all those times you dragged me along as a kid to volunteer at Hot Zone Relief Centers. You used to say, you have to pay it forward. The future will always be brighter for it. I'm trying to live up to your example. I love you. We'll be together again soon. The day I was supposed to meet my sister's new baby, a vert swooped in and a crew of mass commandos threw a bag over my head. Next thing I knew, I was being told how the world would end and given a choice. Die now, or help Zero Dawn and die later. At least Nicole, Ella, and baby Aiden will be safe in Elysium. Gave up my allotment to make sure they could stay together. I don't know if any of this will actually work. Zero Dawn, cradle-raised humans. But if it does, do better than we did, okay? Do, do I see it now? Okay. My name is Emma Irvin, and I'm eight years old. And my favorite animal is a fox. Do you have foxes in the future? I hope so. They're the cutest. And super smart. That's the way have to go underground soon. She's like a fox. And then the bad robots won't get us. So, I guess this is H and G. Hi, and... Goodbye! The last time I spoke to Leanna, they were just about to ship out to the Pacific Front. They really believed that if they could buy us some time, it'd be worth it. That Zero Dawn would save us. But if you were listening to this, then they were right. It was worth it. Their name was Leanna Jensen. 9th Civilian Guard Brigade for Operation Enduring Victory. And they were so, so brave. So, yeah, I told the rest of the team. I was standing in the cafeteria, trying to pick out a god-awful meal cartridge when it suddenly hit me. Every school field trip, August always asked me to pack extra in his lunch pack so that he could share it with his friends. I, I don't know how. I was lucky enough to end up with kids so generous. And I know he'd want to share this too. So, to uh, whoever finds this place, this was us. <laughs> 